Hi friends, I'm Flutter. In this video, I'm going to talk about how and why I'm using AI to code my game. Why I'm using AI to code my game is because I'm still really new at coding and I don't have a lot of experience and I'm working on my VR game by myself. I wish I had a programmer to work with, but it's just me, so I'm using AI as my friend and coworker on this project. <laughs> First and most importantly, I didn't go into this blindly. I did take a course in C Sharp through Xartera in which I, I left the program with a little prototype that I made really learning C Sharp. So that was really great. And then also I went through Unity's Junior Programmer Pathway and they've got a lot of great learning pathways for free on their website that I highly suggest going through. I even have a video talking about my experience about that that you might wanna check out. When I had this foundation down, it made it a lot easier to read code and just understand what was going on and communicate. So I do think having the foundation is better because not only will it allow you to communicate with AI properly about what you wanna do, but you'll be more likely to catch mistakes. Now, I don't catch all of them, but AI will make those mistakes. And if you don't know what to look for or you don't see it, it's just gonna take you even longer or you may never be able to solve your coding issues. So how do I do this? Well, first I think at a high level what I want to accomplish and what's the interaction that I would like to do. So before I even think about asking for a line of code from the computer, I say what I wanna do, I say what Unity version I'm using, I always tell the computer that I'm, use, I'm making a VR game. And I usually choose Claude AI or Unity Muse for that first high level idea and approach that I'm looking for. Claude AI, I really liked because I like how Claude AI explains things. However, you're limited in how many responses you can get unless you do the paid prescription, subscription. <laughs> so that's why I don't use Claude for everything because I do get limited responses unless I pay, but I like how Claude explains things. Unity Muse is also for, pay, you have to pay for that. And I like going, to ask it for a high level because it's Unity. And since I'm using Unity, I feel like it can give me a, a good approach off the right off at the start. And then I use free chat GPT for all the coding and for the most responses because it's free. And I it seems unlimited. I have not run into it limiting me. <laughs> so that's why I do it that way. Now, if chat GPT isn't really giving me the answer, then I use Claude and I, and I take what I've done so far and maybe I'll paste the code into Claude and say what I'm trying to do and what the approach is, where I'm at. And then Claude will give me an idea that I'll then go tell ChatGPT about. And then, so what I'm doing is I'm being like the communicator between all three of these different AIs. And that's how I end up getting either better approaches or better answers to the problems that I'm trying to solve. The issue that I've been having with Unity Muse as of this recording is that sometimes the answers are cut off really quickly and I get errors. And I'm not the only person that has run into this, so I think they need to do some fixing before you can really get some responses being more reliable because really it's not that reliable right now. So I've just defaulted to ChatGPT and Claude for now. One bit of advice that I think is really important is go slowly. When you first get some coding suggestions, you may be able to copy and paste those right away, but you don't wanna just copy and paste blindly. You do wanna look at what's being suggested. Once you have some functioning code, look at what AI is suggesting and only copy and paste or take what you need. Sometimes the computer will just give you, you know, a line to change or a method to change. But if you're just blindly copying and pasting over it, you might, you might actually save over something that was working because the computer is not gonna remember what is actually still working for you unless you tell it. So you have to be really careful about that and go slow. 
Something that I found really helpful is to, you can just copy and paste errors that you get from the council just without even saying anything, <laughs> like right into ChatGPT. And the response that I get will be like trying to solve the problem right away. So that's really helpful. One thing that I also found that is takes a little bit of time, but since the AI is not in your Unity project, it's not gonna see everything which it would be nice if it could do that, but it can't right now. So something that I've done is when I have a lot of debug logs, cause I'm trying to find out where in the code or where my issue might be, what happens is I have a lot of debug logs in the console, right? And it's just kind of showing what's going on in play mode. What I do sometimes if I'm really struggling is I copy and paste one by one the entire what I'm seeing in the console. Cause sometimes it's, it's doable. It's like 10 to 15 things that get printed out. So if I put that all into ChatGPT, it really gives an even, even better picture. And a lot of times that can help solve it because they're seeing uh, all the responses that I'm getting back when I'm in play mode. It doesn't always help, but I noticed that recently that helped a lot. What's great about this is that you'll learn really how to communicate these, um, this logic and, and for your code and what you want to do. So it really helps with communicating these ideas and any issues you might be having if you want to work with a real person too, not just a computer. And I did, I have learned a lot about how to create systems from this and what approaches I can take. And then sometimes if a pro an approach is not working, I just scrap the whole thing and then I start fresh. Uh, because I do learn a lot just by going through that process. Now, it takes me a lot longer than it's going to take someone who has years and years of coding experience. But, you know, that's what being a programmer is all about. It's about solving problems and coming up with the best approaches and the best way to do something. So I'm just still learning, you know, the best ways to have clean code and yeah, all those different things and it, it, it's, it's a learning process, but it's been made a lot easier now that I can use AI. I mean, it, it, on a level, on any level, <laughs> and it really helps because I have that foundation. So I think if, if you have that foundation and you're struggling a little bit, you're struggling and you don't have anyone to really talk to, give it a try and maybe you'll have some success as well. Thanks friends. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful to you. I love talking about my creative process. So please stick around, come back uh, for my next video and uh, we'll talk more about what, uh, I'll let you know when I'm learning and what I find out. And I'm hoping that what I learned can help you to create your dream project and just make things easier for you because I know how hard game development and design can be. You got this. Thanks, friends.